It's good to be in camp meeting. And that's what I thought this was. I was sure it was going to be camp meeting. And, and I love camp meeting. I got saved, uh, gave my heart to the Lord in the winter of 59. And I received the Holy Ghost. And then they started talking to me about camp meeting. And I thought, what's camp meeting? And so I made my way to Harvey Camp that summer, drove on the grounds, and the place was packed with people. And uh, as I stepped into that large auditorium and it was filled, the platform was full of preachers. I, I never saw such a sight and marvelous marvelous uh, setting in my life as there was there. And that was my introduction to camp meeting. And they, uh, they uh, brought the very best preachers. They had the J.T. Pews and the N.A. Urshans and uh, the T.F. Tennies and C.M. Beckton and Lonnie Treadways. And uh, they brought just the best preachers and they preached, they preached what I believed. And I was proud for our saints to be there to know that this guy is just reinforcing what I believe. And that was wonderful. It was, it was a wonderful experience. And then to see the elders, C.B. Dudley, a uh, fellow was preaching one night, and Brother Dudley was there, and, and he did a little bit of talking. And so the speaker, when he came to the floor, he said, should I give half my offering to Brother Dudley? Because he's done half the preaching. And uh, Brother Priest, Brother Priest was a Jesus name, one God, Holy Ghost filled preacher. And A.W. Post, I was out with a preacher fishing the other day, come time to pray, and he said, I remember Brother Post saying, Our Father and our God. And he said the hair would stand up on the back of our neck when he stood in that pulpit. And then I think of Brother E.L. Jakes, Brother, uh, Brother Beasley, Brother Wynn Stairs, Brother Paul McDonald. That was camp meeting. Amen. And I love camp meeting. Praise the Lord. And uh, the saints of the Lord uh, were precious, and it's just wonderful to be here tonight. Now, before I get into business here, I got a little something in my pocket that I'd like to show you. It looks like a little diaper. <laughs> I hate that. I despise that. And, uh, you know, we talk about COVID-19, and we talk about uh, quarantine, and we talk about you're not supposed to sing, and you're not supposed to hug, and I'm a hugger. I, I like to hug. <laughs> Amen. You're not supposed to shake hands. You're supposed to stay six feet apart and all of that. And uh, so I ask a question tonight. Do we want to hear more news and turn the news on and talk about COVID-19? And, and uh, do, do you want, I, don't, I, I don't want to hear. Do you want to hear about COVID-19 or Camp Meeting 20? <laughs> Praise God. I want to hear about Camp Meeting 2020. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last uh, two nights have been fabulous. The preaching's been wonderful. And I'm starting to get that old time feeling back. That old time feeling, glory to God, hallelujah. Would you do something for me now? Would you worship the Lord? Would you lift your hands and give glory to God? Father, I love you tonight. Lord, I love you tonight, and I thank you for camp meeting. I thank you for the gathering of the saints and the gathering of the ministry, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be glorified, be glorified, be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read a scripture from 
Joshua chapter 14 tonight. Maybe the brother could give me a hand. Joshua 14. And uh, I am going to start reading at verse 9. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord thy God. Now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he has these forty and five years, ever since the Lord spake this word to Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now I am this day fourscore and five years old. Happy birthday, Caleb. He said, I am this day eighty-five. Verse 11, and yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou hast heardest in the day how that the Anakins were, were there and that the cities were great. And fence, if so be the Lord will be with me, I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord has said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Hebron, for an inheritance. Praise the Lord. I want to talk tonight a little bit about, about mountains. I've been in Newfoundland recently and I'm marvelous I get off of the ferry and watch the formation of rocks and wonder how that happened and how it got there, and mountains. And as I was driving, Brother Farrell and I were driving, I looked at one high point, and there would just be a, a scattering of little bushes and trees to the top. And I said, I would love to go to the top of that mountain and have a cup of tea. I'd love to go up there just to be able to say that I was able to do it, and I did it. And uh, mountains have always been a challenge to me. And uh, I, I look at this old man, 85 years old, and he said, you know, boys, I'd like to have that mountain. It's one of the oldest uh, inhabited areas on earth, and it's where uh, Abraham was buried and his wife, and uh, it was, it's just a city of refuge, and he said, I'd like to have that, and he said that he was given that, and Joshua blessed him and gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, for an inheritance. And uh, I, uh, I've had a little something going through my mind, and I'm just going to tell you what it is before I sit down. <clears throat> I turned uh, 78 the other day, and uh, I was uh, sitting in the restaurant here with my wife yesterday, and I said, Shirley, that highway right there is the highway I came up in 1960 to go to Bible college. I came up that with a little black car with a few rags in the back and a bunch of junk. That's all I had. And I, I said, I drove right up past here, and that was 60 years ago. And I said, you know what? I am a very blessed man, and I can't forget where the Lord has brought me from. Came up and went to Bible college. I didn't know anybody, and... Uh, didn't have enough money to pay next month's board. But I went because I felt the call of God. And I want to say to you younger preachers, and I want to say to our honored people today, that I don't regret the life that I have chosen to live for Jesus. Amen. Climbing that mountain hasn't always been easy, and there have been times that we didn't have much money. And uh, wondered just what was going to happen. But I'm down at the end of it now. I'm down at the end of it now. And I wouldn't want to change a thing that I did. I love pastoring. Brother Farrell said, sure you love pastoring because you're retired. <laughs> and uh, I do. I love pastoring. And, and, and I don't mind problems as long as I'm not a part of it. And uh, I, I don't mind that at all. I, I, I am so thankful that the Lord called me and brought me up that river valley when I was 18 years old. Brought me up there. And now he has blessed me. 
given me a wonderful wife and family and a beautiful church and to be here tonight. Brother Brewer has honored me and the board by asking me to be here tonight. And I appreciate that so much. Brother Brewer's been so thoughtful uh, for me and my family, and I appreciate it. Praise God. So I want to talk to you tonight about uh, claiming your mountain, and, uh, and I know God's going to help us. Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for your presence, Lord, and that's, that's what we're looking after. That's what we're pursuing tonight is the power and the presence and the anointing and the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I ask that the blessing of the Lord would rest upon us in this service. Be glorified in everything that's said and done, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. Amen. I want to talk just a little bit about some American history. And uh, uh, United States was formed probably 100 years before Canada. In 1776, declared their independence. But do you know the days prior to their independence, they were invaded by some Brits, the British. There were 1,700 British men that came into the eastern part of the United States in uh, the Boston, in that New England area. They came in and established 13 British colonies numbering thousands. They, uh, they, just, they just took over and went in and supported by the British government. And uh, they, they, they held strong. And uh, finally one day, a general by the name of George Washington said, we've had enough of this. And he began the Revolutionary War to drive the British back and, and drive them out. And they were, they were driven out and then the United States became a, an independent nation and, and I love the United States. I love the United States. And when they, uh, when they did that and in their celebration, uh, on July the 4th, I'd like to read a poem and this is where I'm going to drive my few thoughts tonight. A poem that was written by Sam Walter Foss in 1894. And he, he read, he wrote, Bring me men to match my mountains. Bring me men to match my plains. Men with empire in their purpose and new eras in their brain. Bring me men that match the prairie islands deep. Men with a uh, paved highway to uh, amplified destinies and he said bring me men bring me men and uh, while they were celebrating they thought about their great country devoid of the Brits now and it's ours and they were looking at 3.8 million square miles a large and a, and a great wonderful nation Three point. but then somebody said we have a problem and the problem is about 25% of our great United, United States are mountains, about 25%. And uh, they begin to consider uh, all of the mountain ranges that there was in the United States, and 25% was, was mountains. The Rockies alone, 3,000 miles of mountains from New Mexico to British Columbia with 73,300 different uh, mountain peaks. 54 of the high parts of the Rockies was over 14,000 feet high. And they were huge. And everywhere they looked, they found these mountains. And so that's when Mr. Foss <coughs> wrote a poem when he thought about everywhere we look, we're confronted with mountains. Look toward the Pacific coast, there's mountains. And uh, he wrote that beautiful poem that has been in my mind for, for many, many years. Give me men, bring me men to match my mountains. Bring me men to match my plains. 
Bring me men with empires in their purpose and new eras in their brain. That was, that was the call out of the poet. And uh, tonight I want to suggest that uh, this business of uh, mountains, and I don't care where you live or what you're going through, you're going to face, you're going to face some mountain experiences. And uh, as uh, this ordained young couple, Miko, you're going to face some mountain challenges. And all I can say is, God, give me men that will match the mountains. Give me men that can match the plains. That's got empire in their purpose. Empire in their purpose and eternity in their brain. Amen. I, uh, I, I thank the Lord for every mountain that I have faced, and I've faced a few. I've had a few, I've had a few mountains. And, uh, but I wanted to be a man that was equal to my mountain. I want, to, I want to be a match for my mountain and for my plain. And I want empires in my purpose. I want something in my, in my heart that is uh, put there by God that's going to bring me through it. And he has. The Lord has brought me through it. I am, I am now looking at these so many years of ministry. And, uh, and when I started Bible college... Men my age were the old, old men that were dying off. Brother Jakes died in 1961 at the age of 61. And, uh, and the elders began to drop off, and I realized where I am. But you know what? I am uh, here tonight, and I have tried to be a match for my mountains. I've tried to walk on my mountains, and I've tried to... I've tried to understand that no matter where I go or what I do, there are going to be challenges, and I am going to, I'm going to be able to go through it. Praise the Lord. Every service, there's a mountain in every service. There's an obstacle in every service. And we have to be greater than the mountain. And uh, whatever we do, we've got to be greater than that. I remember, I remember one night, <coughs> uh, one morning, I was filling in for a pastor. He was away. And this lady came through the door, and I went back and shook hands with her. I like to shake hands. Glory to God. I, li I like to shake hands. And uh, I went back, and she said, uh, she said I, I've met you at the hospital before. I'm a retired nurse. I said, well, that's wonderful. It's good to have you. And I said, your name would be. And she, she told me what her name was. <clears throat> Lucille. And she said, my name is Lucille. I said, that wouldn't be Lucille Ball. And she said, no, I'm not Lucille Ball. And uh, she said, I'm from St. Joseph Church. And I said, well, that's good. We're glad you're here. And she said, and I'll tell you why I'm here. And I begin to recognize my mountain. I, I, I recognize that I've got an incline here. I've got to climb. And, and I want to be bigger than my mountain. And she said, the reason I'm here is because they don't worship in our church like you do. And uh, I love worshiping here. And she said, I have come, I've come to worship. And I said, well, my love, you're in the right place. This is exactly where you need to be. And I want you to worship. So I sat behind the pulpit. I sat so that I could have one eye around looking at her. <clears throat> I don't take my eye off of business. And I looked down at her, and I would see her with her hand up, and she was reading the words on the wall, and so on. And I looked at her, and I said, God, we've got to get a hold of this sweet little woman. We've got to get a hold of her. So we had worship, and we preached, and gave an altar call. She came, and she stood right here in front of the pulpit. And uh, so I said, you got to be careful, you know, about what you do. So I, so I just went down off of the platform, and I put my hand on her head, and my hand just hit her head when she looked at me, and she, her tongue started just flapping and going, and she just got it. And I said, uh, I said, Lucille, that's the Holy Ghost. And she couldn't even talk in English. She just, she just stood there and, and spoke in tongues, 
And we baptized her in Jesus' name. Amen. And now she's gone to be with the Lord. And uh, I, uh, I, I just believe that we need men that can match the mountains that will come our way. Amen. Amen. You may be facing some mountains in your life even now. But there's nothing that the, that the Lord cannot do. Praise the Lord. I, uh, I was thinking, here's an uh, 85-year-old man saying, give me my mountain. I want that mountain. I, 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 want, to be, I want to be bigger than my mountain. And uh, so I, uh, I looked at some of the things that, that I've had to face in my ministry, and uh, I knew that God was going to be with me, and I've had a few mountains. I have followed a few mountains. God, give me men to match my mountains and match my planes with, with the empire in my brain. I, I want something to be happening in my brain. It's going to bring something glory to the glory and the honor of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I, uh, I want to just make a few points here that I was going to say, I give you permission to, to criticize what I say tonight. You can, you can criticize me. You got my permission. Uh, I, I've noticed some, some mountains in our fellowship that I've been concerned about. And uh, I'm concerned about uh, our Bible college graduates being trained and coming out and not getting involved in the work of the Lord. You don't have to amen me. You, you, just, you don't have to amen me. But I'm, I'm concerned. When I went to Bible college, I had a desire when I come out to get into a pulpit. I wanted to be a preacher. And a preacher I became. And uh, I, I look at them, and we've got pulpits that are vacant, and we need men to work. Do you know what they're doing? They're going out and getting us old fellows at the geriatric ward. You know, here I am. I've spent the last 12 or 14 years just going around and filling in churches. And I ask the question, where are the young men? Where are the young men that have been trained? Amen. I believe that we need to get our, our Bible college mountain under control and get these men into ministry. Praise the Lord. And I, you say, well, you're, you're putting them down. No, I'm not. Because what is needed is that they need some older men that will make room for them in their established churches. And uh, they need men that will have some, uh, open up their cash supplies and if he wants to take his little wife and go to Newfoundland, we need to stand in there beside them and support them and hold up their hands. And when they get in a hard spot, they don't need our criticism. They need us to stand in and support. Now, this is my stand tonight. This is my mountain. It's a mountain of our district. And, and I, I'd, I'd love to see us give us men to match our mountains and get these young people on the field. I think of, I think of uh, Newfoundland. We just got back in little middle arm church over there. Look, you, you couldn't keep me out of there if I was coming out of Bible college. I just would love to be over there with those dear people. There's such a great, great need. Everywhere you look, there's a great need. And here they got us old preachers. <clears throat> and uh, look, look, look at Harry Lewis. Look at 78 years old, and uh, I just, a man came up to me tonight and gave me a word from the Lord. And he said, Brother Lewis, I got a word from the Lord for you. I said, good. He said, God is not through with you yet. You've still got something that you can do for the kingdom of God, and the Lord is not through with you. And I thanked him, and I will consider that. Because I've been talking to my wife for the last three days about writing my resignation. And to Brother Brewer, I've talked to him about it. And this, this old, these, these old fellas, you know, we're good. And I said to Brother Farrell, I said, I'm somewhere between uh, 
third base and home. He said, you've been there for 15 years. <clears throat> and I, I told my wife, I said, I'm going, to, I'm going to make an announcement. I did make an announcement back a few years ago at our church. I said, for the last 40 years, I've been running up and down this valley, marrying and burying people for the last 40 years. But for the most part, I'm going to be done that. And she said, what's that mean for the most part? I says, well, I can do some if I want to. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it never changed a thing. It just kept going down. Brother Farrell said to me yesterday, we were together, and he said, you got to help me with the funeral. you got to help me with the funeral. So I'm not done. I, I get through here, and I'm going home, and i got to get two sermons ready for New Denmark. See, and do and you know what? This is my mountain. My mountain is we need to be training our young men and encouraging them and standing behind them and not criticizing them and give them some support. You, you, I'm a, you, you won't believe this, but I wasn't always perfect. <laughs> I didn't always have a lovely flower. One woman gave me a compliment one time. She said, I like Sister Lewis, but as far as I'm concerned, he's the Antichrist. <laughs> and I said, I didn't realize I occupied such a prominent scriptural place. <laughs> she, I was the Antichrist. And, uh, oh, I, I've, had some, I've had some mountains and so on. But the churches were good to me. The churches, the older ministers stood with me and they allowed me to go to their Bible school and they, they allowed me to preach. And here, Brother Brewer's got me preaching up here tonight. That's a tremendous blessing and an honor to me. And I thank God for the wonderful blessings of the Lord on my life. Why can't we see that in others and put something into them? Brother Miko, I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. I was talking to two young men at the back, and I'd forgotten their names. That goes with that 78 thing. And I said, you know, I, uh, I like to do some things that people can remember me by when I'm gone. I, uh, I want to leave a heritage. I, I, I want to leave something that people can say, Brother Lewis was a Christian, or Brother Lewis was this or that. And those two young men looked at me and gave me the great compliment. They said, Brother Lewis, if we could only do the half of what you've done. And I thought, I'm not worthy of that because I'm not persuaded that I've done all that I could do. Amen. I, I, I would love to, I'd love to walk on that mountain. I'd love to walk on that mountain. If nobody else, if nobody else wants to help you, brother, and I know there's going to be a ton of people wanting to help you because you're great, great talent. But I want to be found guilty of holding up the hands of this young man and this young woman. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's something else that I, that I need to get off of my chest. This looks like I got the mic. <laughs> and uh, there's something about, about uh, Caleb said, I was over and wandered in the Canaan land and so on. And he said, I... I, I want this mountain, and it's uh, 30 some hundred feet high, and it's where Abraham was bar buried, and Sarah. And uh, he said, I want that mountain. I, I, I want that mountain. And uh, there's something else that, I, that, that bothers me, and it's, it's a mountain that I, I, want to be, I want to be a match for my mountain. I want to be a match. And that is over this sickness thing. Over this sickness thing. I don't know. I don't know what it's doing to you, but I don't appreciate it when the enemy is attacking our preachers. I don't appreciate that. Amen. I, 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 want, I want to walk on top of that and to believe that God's able to do exceeding and abundantly Brother McCarty, if you're hearing this, I want you to know that I love and respect and appreciate you so much. Amen. And my heart's been with you all day. Amen. Brother Price, 
precious pastor. And uh, we need to walk on some of our mountains and our challenges. We, we need to say, Brother Lewis, where did you get all that? And say, how, and another thing, how long are you going to preach? Look, i got a clock back there, and I can tell. <clears throat> Doesn't mean much, but I know it's back there. I was brought up under the teaching of an old pastor by the name of A.W. Post. And Brother Post put in my heart that there wasn't anything impossible with God. I've prayed with him in the night. I've prayed all night with him in a camp, and I'd hear him speaking in tongues, whispering under his breath in the night. He's on that cold floor with a blanket around him, and him praying for the anointing of God. I will never forget that teaching that I got in my heart from A.W. Post. And I believe, I believe that we can, we can climb over that mountain to these brethren, Brother McCarty and Brother Price, to name, and there's another pastor's wife in Carleton County that's been very sick. I believe that God's able to heal. Amen. And I'm not going to sit back. I'm not going to let the mountains cloud me over and hold me back because I know that God is able to do it. Hallelujah! We built, a, we built a building in Perth, and it was a pretty good-sized building. And uh, when I got through working on that thing, I said to myself, that's the last time I'm going to be involved in the building program. And the Lord slapped my mouth. Don't you ever say that. This is the last time. I said, Lord, I want to rephrase that. We're going to make this church that we have here 150 feet long and 100 feet wide. I, we want to make this just the foyer. And uh, there were two men, two men, two men of God. One was C.M. Becton. Brother Becton came in there and he prophesied. He said, God is going to move in this area, and you'll be baptizing people in the night. There's going to be a, a people coming here, and uh, another pastor uh, prophesied, and he said, Brother Lewis, I feel this in the Holy Ghost, that God's got a great work for you to do. There's going to be great work done here. Brother Farrell, I've never forgotten that. I have never forgotten that. Amen. I've walked around the building. I've gone out, walked around the building and said, well, how can we add on to this building? And it's a lovely building. How can we add on to it? And the Lord said, <laughs> I'm not even the pastor. And the Lord said, you're going to start off the side and you're going to build out toward the river. And, and I could see that huge building being built out there uh, with a big spire on, on the front of it and the sunrise in the east is on, on that and, and the glory of the Lord. You say, well, Brother Lewis, wh why, why are you want? Because... I want to be able to walk on top of my mountains. And I'm not going to go down with my head down. God's got a work to do. And God's got a work to do for you. And you've got mountains. You've got mountains. And he said, he said, bring me men to match my mountains. And bring me men to match my plains. Those words were put over the doors. And I'm soon going to be through here. Those words were put over the door of the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. And uh, chiseled into the marble above that U.S. Air Force, and it was chiseled in there, bring, uh, bring me men. That was there. Bring me men. And the hundreds and thousands, and I read about it several times, of those men and women that came and walked in, they looked up and said, the cry of the U.S. Air Force is, bring me men. Bring me men that are going to be bigger than their mountains. we got mountains all over the place here. Give us men. Bring us men that are going to become a part of the U.S. Air Force. But you know what? I'll tell you what. The, uh, I don't want to call it the women's movement. But it was somebody that said that that's a male chauvinistic bigoted statement and they on the 3rd of 30th of March of 03 17 years ago they had those names taken off of the building 
It don't put on there, give us men. We don't want that there anymore. And uh, we're going to remove it. And they did remove it. And they wanted more gender neutral. And uh, do you know what? I still think that ought to be up there. I still think the church ought to be saying, give us men. Give us men that's bigger than our mountains. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 And uh, we're speaking a while ago about the young men. Uh, in 62, 1962, in the winter, brother, uh, pastor from Miramichi came to the Bible college and said to brother Reed, that was the dean, and he said, I want two of your fine young men to come. And brother Arden Bustard and I were both 18 years old, and we went, we went over to Chatham to hold revival meetings for brother Roy Sullivan. Now, we had no experience. We were very young. And we went over there, and we threw ourselves into the hands of God. We realized we had some mountains to climb in order to fill C.B. Dudley country. We went over in there, and we got to praying. And that first week, there were seven people that got the Holy Ghost. There were seven people got the Holy Ghost, and we came home and washed our rags and went back the second week. And they started getting the Holy Ghost the second week. And you know, they'd get the Holy Ghost. Uh, they'd get the Holy Ghost before service started. We'd be there. That lights were on in the church, but there was no service started. And so we just gathered around the altar, and we got to praying around the altar, and we got to walking on our mountains, and God started filling with the Holy Ghost. And out of that, out of that came this Pastor Carter's father. It'd be Miko's grandfather. That they, the group of the Carter boys got the Holy Ghost, and there was nine, I believe it was nine, that went in the ministry from that rival, uh, revival. You say, oh, Brother Lewis, you're, you're young. You, you young people can't do anything. I'll have you to know if we'll get on our mountains, there's a lot of things we can do. God's got a lot of wonderful things for us to do. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I... Uh, I know you're just dying for me to get through here. But I still got the mic. And he said, I'm 85 years old, and I, Brother Mills, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Amen. So I, I made the statement the other day. I said, you know, I'm 78, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of here and get the word out that I'm all done. I'm all done. And uh, so on. And I looked at it and I said, 78, that doesn't sound very good. I said, it would sound better if it was 80. So I said, I got two more years to go yet. I'm going to hang around here for two more years and fight the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, do you feel, I feel wonderful. I, I feel wonderful in the Holy Ghost. I, and I feel the presence of God. Amen. Amen. That, and I'm just going to take one more crash. That uh, COVID-19 thing, I despise that. I've never heard of it before in my lifetime. I had to battle that and go around with a mask on. And uh, I, uh, I, I've never known anything like this. And, and quarantine, you can't, go, you can't go over the border and you can't do this and that and so on. And I got to hating that so bad. But, uh, and they kept you at a church. You, you can't go to church. Now the church is in California. You're not supposed to sing. Now I was in a church the other day. It says, you're not supposed to go to the altar. I can't go to church and I can't sing and I can't go to the altar and I can't hug my brother. Well, I might as well go die. <laughs> I might as well just throw in the towel. But you know what? Every time I come into the presence of God, I can feel the anointing of the Lord and the power of God. And I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Bring me men that are bigger than their mountains. Amen. And God bless you, brother and sister.
You're going to have mountains to climb, I guarantee you, because I've had mine. I've had, I've had plenty. And, uh, but I'm in good shape. I'm in good shape. My wife and I is getting along. <coughs> we, were, we were bragging about camp meeting. We were bragging about camp meeting a little while ago. And it was after a morning service that I took my girlfriend out for a drive. I was pastoring a little church. I took her out for a little drive. And we went up the road above the tabernacle. And I just pulled over on a little side road. And I said, uh, my kids all laugh at him. And I said, uh, Shirley, I want you to marry me. Because I need a piano player. You talk a, a romantic proposal. <laughs> Shirley, I want you to marry me because I need a piano player. Well, I did. I did. And I got both. And that's been 58 years ago. Praise God, and we're headed for 100. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, precious people. God bless you. Give us men that are bigger than our mountains. Amen. When you hit obstacles, don't give up. Keep going on. You're not alone. We've been through it. We've been through it. I uh, at that Bible college and I. The Bible college, we uh, we had a lot of debt over our heads at one point, and Brother Mills called me one day and he said, "Brother Lewis, there's not much money coming in for that next month's payment." And I know every inch of my house in the dark. I, I navigate through my house. I, I travel most of the night anyway. I don't I think I'll sell my bed. And uh, so I went out in the living room and the devil told me, you're not going to make that payment and you're going to have to admit to the brethren that you made a mistake on the school. You've got to go through and give that all up. And that devil walked all over me. I went out in that living room in the dark. Amen. The only thing I could see was a little light off of a microwave. And I walked back and forth in there, and I started to worship the Lord. And I got my hands up, and the glory of the Lord came down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, Brother Miko, you're going to hit some dry spots, and it's going to be hard. But you're going to make it. Because some old preachers believe in you. Amen. Quite often I say this on a board meeting when I'm dealing. You folks may not know this. In order to get your license, you have to be local licensed. You appear before the board, and that's scary to me. They look right through you, my local license, and then general, and then ordination. And uh, then they talk to you, maybe talk to your wife and find out some things. It's very, very scary. <clears throat> and I, uh, I, I used to used to dread going before those. But you know what I tell candidates when they come before the board when I was there? I would say the best friends you have in the world are right in this room. These older preachers are the best friends you have. And you'll hit the hard times and the dry times. Let us be your friends. Let us love you. Oh, Jesus. I thank you for the ministry. I thank you for the call to the ministry. And I could have wasted my life in so many various ways. But you put it into my heart to love people. And there have been some very serious situations. Serious situations. Heartbreaking situations. But Lord, you allowed us to be there to help. And as Pastor Farrell said today... We've got another death that we're facing back home. Precious woman that we've known and loved for many years. But I'm glad for the call. I'm glad for the anointing standing in the stead of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I pray the blessing of God upon us as a church. Minister to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.